When I made my first video on Convergent Pokemon, it was right after Wiglet was announced. But now that Scarlet and Violet have released, I think we have a better idea of what they're going for. I mean heck, they never even used the term Convergent Pokemon officially. But as that's what's most accepted by fans so far, I'll be calling these Convergent Mons. To summarize Convergent Evolution in our world, it's where two unrelated species end up sharing a trait, despite that trait not being shared in their ancestors. Now, I know that might sound confusing. I mean, if you go far enough, can't you say that there's a common ancestor for everyone? So when it comes to Convergent Evolution, just remember this one word, coincidence. This dolphin coincidentally has the same body plan as a shark. It's not because their ancestor looked like this, because dolphins' ancestors look more like rats. It's when they started to evolve to live underwater that they coincidentally turned into a similar shape to sharks, because that shape with the fins does pretty well underwater. Now some comments say how this species might have looked at this other one and wanted to become more like that. That's specifically called mimicry, mimicking someone else. In a linguistic sense, yes, it's a type of convergent evolution because they're evolving to look more alike. But when you say convergent evolution, most would assume the previous definition with the coincidences. Alright, now let's talk about these so-called convergent Pokemon from Scarlet and Violet. When I saw Wiglet, I really thought it would just be the first stage that happened to look like Diglett. Like, I thought it would evolve into something wacky, like my jokey guess here where it's a wacky inflatable tube man. But no, we got Wug Trio. What is a Wug anyways? It's cute and all, but I won't be surprised if we get newly designed evolutions for convergence in the future. I find it very weird just how few of these there are in total because other than Wug Trio's line, we got Toad School's line, where they coincidentally look like Tentacool's line. Now let's make a distinction here. In our world with Game Freak employees, yes, this is a very deliberate reference. But in the Pokemon's world, they're treated as coincidences. Unlike in our world where we could kind of reason how convergent species look similar because of a trait helping them to fit their environment. In the Pokemon world, they related a fungus to a jellyfish. There's no reason why the fungus has these sacs on it. So yeah, you can see how these aren't exactly the convergent evolution that we see in our world, but I still think that convergent mods are better to say than coincidentally similar looking mods. Anyways, if you wanted to make a convergent mod, where would you start? I find convergence harder to make than any other kind of variant. You take them on and give it a completely different species, but that species would have to share a similar body shape. Sometimes you just gotta squint and look at random mons and see what other living thing can fit that shape. I'd say looking at generations 1 through 5 are the easiest because the more recent generations have more specific designs crammed into them. Not saying that is impossible of course, but just for any kind of variant, when I'm stuck, I do tend to look at the earlier generations where designs feel more malleable. Alright, so I've stumbled onto this challenge by the Aussie artist on Instagram. Go follow them, they got great designs, and they're making a completely oceanic region. They issue the challenge to make any kind of fake mon, including Convergence, that could possibly fit this oceanic region. So after looking at Wug Trio and Toad Scroll, I took a look at the Gen 1 roster and saw Parasect, a lovely shape with a big mushroom shell. Now, Parasect does have a specific concept, that being Cordyceps, the fungus that can zombify ants, but I'm ignoring the concept overall. Toad Scroll didn't have to worry about the poisonous sacs and tentacruel. No, I just need to squint and look at the shape. So you see the big mushroom shell, then think about what you could do with those claws, and well wait, I should probably show the pre-evolution first. So here's Terras, a turtle with barnacles on their shell. The name comes from a terrapin, which used to mean aquatic turtles. Instead of mushrooms, there are barnacles on the shell, and Terras ain't too happy about that. Apparently having too many barnacles on the shell is a sign for bad health in turtles. 
So I guess I have bad news because the Evolution Terra sect has even more barnacles on it. Uh, got that big shell though, which I recognize as looks more like a land turtle shell, but scientific accuracy ain't the goal for these convergence. Rather, the goal is looking like the mon you're referencing while being a completely different species. A turtle instead of these bugs. Alright, so I was planning on just ending with that being my one convergent line, but I was in a thinking mood. I was scrounging around for any single stagers I could pull off quickly, and then I saw Carnivine. For the longest time, I was thinking about making it a bobbit worm because it has a trapped mouth, but no, I took a step back. It doesn't have to be a trap. Instead, it just needs a big mouth. And who has a big mouth? Gulper eels. Sometimes called pelican eels, these guys have a giant mouth compared to their body. Despite being a gulper eel, Carnagulp's color here is a reference to Mario 64's moray eels. Just know that these are different species of eels. Now, Carnagulp might look a bit too much like Carnivine here, but just like how Toast School's line has funny animations, I'd expect Carnagulp's lower mouth to balloon out when it attacks. And finally, I was thinking about calling this just pure water, but water dark sounded more fun. If these convergent Pokemon are based off of just looks rather than any scientific justifications, what's stopping me from turning a mantis into a mantis shrimp? I mean, it's in the name, but mantid shrimp aren't even shrimp and they're not even mantids. They're just called that because they hold their claws like them. But in reality, it's kind of flipped and the claws are doing completely different things. But it looks similar enough, so it's good for a convergent Pokemon. Emphasis on Pokemon. I went to look for a mantis mod and found Generation 7's Lorantis. Now I know Lorantis is a plant that's supposed to look like a mantis, but remember we're only concerned about the looks here, not the concept. So here's Fopron. For the shiny I tried to reference the brown mantis shrimp, but I ended up turning the brown into gold. And here is Lurpron. I know that the body shape changed a lot underneath the waist, but I was already dedicated to this line. Mantis shrimp have one of the strongest punches they deliver with their claws, thus they are just pure fighting type. I'll be talking about mantis shrimps a lot more when I get to my region, because I actually have a design based off of them. So I hope this clears up how you can make your own convergent Pokemon. It's not the same as our convergent evolution, but the main takeaway is that in-universe they feel like coincidences. In the Pokemon world, Wicklet ain't closely related to Diglett, but they happen to look similar. Now there's a big example about Convergent Evolution that I feature in my STEM-based region. I'll share that in a future video as well. If you like these kind of videos, subscribe and tell your friends! I'm trying to start up a Patreon here where I'll put people's names at the end of the video and some of the higher tiers would go over some bonus content. There's actually quite a lot of failed attempts I had before coming up with these designs, which you can see in the Patreon. So thank you all again, and I'll see you next time.